Think Again TV is produced by Center for Inquiry, Canada's premier venue for secular humanists, atheists, skeptics, and free thinkers. In the summer of 2012, the Ontario Liberal government passed Bill 13, the Accepting Schools Act, which prohibits Catholic schools from denying to students their constitutional right to start gay-straight alliances, GSAs, or other sexual orientation-focused student societies. But a year and a half later, there are precisely zero GSAs in Catholic schools, and some have long suspected Catholic boards of being up to something. Now I'm joined by Mississauga Catholic school student Christopher Karras here on Think Again TV with explosive allegations. In his recently launched human rights complaint, he documents a systematic effort directed at the highest levels to deny the legally enshrined rights of him and the students of Ontario. You've reported that this school is actually um, a homophobic school. Yes, there's a lot of uh, uh, pressures on, uh, on me as a youth and on other uh, students uh, just for being who we are. Um, they, uh, I've had a teacher where um, he, he said to us that, um, and not just me, to other students, that um, queer and trans people should not have uh, the right to adopt. Uh, I've had a psychology teacher that um, he didn't think that we should uh, include same-sex couples in the family structures uh, when he was teaching it to our class. In terms of the, 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 the atmosphere, the environment, that these comments that, that your teachers are saying um, has fostered. Can you comment on that? I mean, is it just these, these sporadic incidents or, or is there almost a homophobic culture that permeates your school? Uh, I would say that a lot of people would agree that what I've said and what has happened has been written and said in a narrative. It's as though uh, one incident followed another and uh, a lot of them collide and uh, kind of intersect uh, as we go. Um, it's really unfortunate that I've been targeted because of my sexuality and um, I don't think that it's fair for any student to be targeted because of who they are. There's another example that I read, maybe you can clarify this, it was about a book yes. that you found to be highly offensive. What, why did you find it to be offensive? What, what kind of action did you take as a result of that? So the book uh, is named Poison, um, and it's about alcoholism and how the father uh, goes through uh, a very violent um, alcoholic uh, dilemma or uh, incident. And um, well, one of the incidents that happened in the book is actually he's getting home and he opens up the door and as he's coming in, um, he sees his son doing a sexual act with his partner and um, as he uh, sees what's going on, he says that it's unnatural, uh, it makes him feel uncomfortable, he doesn't want to This was the it. same sex sexual act. Yeah, and so he actually uh, beats him uh, with a baton and um, it's very violent. Um, and I, I, I don't think I've ever read anything so violent. Uh, and I don't think anything of that sort should be in our school. But also what was more shocking was that as the story read on, it was as though Patrick, uh, the boy that I'm talking about, had the same sex act, um, had gone through his life believing that the only way he could go on was by selling drugs or going to do criminal activity out in the street. Mm -hmm. He didn't see any other way out. Now, you have more recently um, uh, been involved in attempts to start a, a positive support group for students, yes. um, in particular with a focus on, on uh, 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 gay issues and sexual orientation. Um, how, was your interest in doing that as a result of these, this environment, this, this sort of what's been described as a homophobic environment in your school? Was it a response to that? It, like, I, I, I really thought that it was important for me and for other students to have a place where we could feel safe mm -hmm. and supported. Because it's really important that we could speak to other students about how we felt about certain things, but also have the possibility of um, speaking to, uh, to other people that are going through the same thing. Were you also empowered partly or motivated to do it at this time by the passing of, of Bill 13, this accepting school legislation, which 
prohibits administrators from blocking the creation of groups like the one you, you were interested in, even in, in Catholic schools. Was that part of the motivation? For, for a long time, I had gone to different support groups here and there, and uh, I had heard about Bill 13 way before it had uh, been passed. Mm -hmm. um, and for a long time, I was thinking of possibly putting in a group, and um, I just didn't think that I would have the support until the bill passed, uh, which is now known as the Accepting Schools Act. Uh, and so I waited, um, and as soon as it pretty much passed, it, uh, Soon after, I had pretty much made the decision that I was going to ask for a group, and uh, that's when everything went downhill from there. And we'll get to the downhill in a moment. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I'm curious again about sort of your motives, and, and it, from what you're saying, it seems like it was in part Bill 13, it was in part uh, the, the environment of the school that demanded this. What about you personally? You would, you would come out as a, as a gay youth when you were 15, I understand? Yes. And so, so that's not too long ago. No. Um, w was, it, was it partly as a response to some, some things that happened uh, in the school when you came out that you wanted to set up this support group for other students? Yes, because there was a, a point where when I had come out, it had become very violent against me. Uh, really? There, there was a lot of students that had used very harsh language about how they, they didn't want to uh, support me and how I was disgusting or that um, I wasn't an individual that they should be supporting. Um, These were students, colleagues of yours. Yes, uh, unfortunately. Hmm. Um, and it also came to a point where um, I had really wanted to leave. I didn't want to be at my school any longer. And uh, I, I stayed because uh, it had been such a long period of time that I had been fighting these obstacles that I, I thought that it was important that I, I stick through it and that I, I make change where I can make it before just leaving and giving up on it, right? So you have all these different sort of strands that, that come together in your mind and you want to start a group. Um, tell me a bit about what you did at that point to get the group off the ground. So um, when, when I wanted my group, I was um, at school a little later than usual and um, I had uh, seen my uh, vice principal in her office and I, I went over to her and I spoke to her and I said, you know, I really want to put in a group under the Accepting Schools Act. Mm -hmm. uh, and she said, that sounds like a great idea. I want to uh, send This off is Bill 13. Yeah, I want to send off an email to the school board. Uh, so she sent off an email. And of course, that was the first uh, and far most obstacle that had uh, been made. She sent off a, an email to the school board and the school board uh, got back to her and said, we want to send off a representative to speak to you an hour after school hours. Uh, and so she wasn't getting paid, but they wanted to talk to her about um, how they weren't comfortable with the Accepting Schools Act and how they had been previously lobbied against it. Uh, by the uh, bishops, and so they they really wanted to, to to take this whole group out of account, or if they were to support it, they weren't going to fully support my group. Just, just so we're clear, this was after the passage of this bill. This is now yes. law. Yes. Okay. Now the bill thirteen is, as you know, has a special provision, a special clause in there that if students voluntarily want to call their group a gay straight alliance, yeah. they have the right to do that. And I'm curious if, though you were not interested in. In, in calling it a GSA, did you get a feeling from the administration or from the school board that the GSA was a non-starter, the use of that particular name? Definitely. I, I think that like if I had wanted to put a, a name uh, as Gay Straight Alliance, I think they would have taken all the steps to have stopped my group uh, fr from being named that or anything of that nature. If I wanted to call it unicorns or something, <laughs> I think they would have been very against it. If you had a rainbow in there in any way. Yeah. Um, you've said, for example, that one thing that was where you also were stonewalled was in setting up the, the discussion topics. Yeah. So again, it was it that if you had anything that was remotely related to sexual orientation or, or gay and lesbian issues, that, that there would be, it would be difficult to set up a meeting to discuss it? How do they actually, pro how do they limit your, your choices of discussion topics? Well, first, um, we have my vice principal sitting in on our conversation, so 
uh, the students feel that they're limited because she has put some of my friends in, in actual um, uh, d detentions or has like uh, taken them out uh, for suspensions and then she's sitting in on a conversation that could put them in a very uneasy place, right? So it, it's very uncomfortable to have her there, but uh, just recently we've also had the principal get involved with the founders meetings. So if he gets involved with the members meetings, it's just going to escalate even more. Is it typical to have a vice principal or even a principal sitting in in the meetings of, of student groups at your no. school? It, it definitely isn't. Uh, and actually, uh, we've had a student that has spoken out to the media to tell them uh, that uh, that's in fact the, the truth that we don't have vice principals or uh, principals involved in the other groups at our school. Do you sense that sometimes you're your, your, uh, your fellow members of the group are self-censoring themselves, especially on, say, sexual orientation issues because of who's sitting in on these meetings? Yes, um, there, there's actually been a, a moment where we um, did a, uh, an icebreaker. And when we had done the icebreaker, I had asked, uh, is there anything that you wanted to say today that you didn't have a chance to say? because you didn't feel comfortable or because it's the first meeting or whatever it may be. And the majority of the students had wanted to say something that day and didn't say it because they felt uncomfortable. From what you're seeing, would, would you characterize the actions taken by the administration and the board as violating Bill 13? Yes, um, and I think my lawyer would say uh, the same. Uh, he thinks I have a strong case uh, and I, I'm going to keep fighting until um, this comes to an end. Since you've sort of come out as a champion for um, uh, student groups focused on sexual orientation, have, have you been contacted by students at other schools in Ontario who are going through similar situations to you? I've been contacted by students, by parents, by different teachers. Uh, I've been strongly supported but also I've had a lot of people come up to me and say, well, this is the issue I'm having. Mm -hmm. What should I be doing? And I've said, you know, you, you need to go fight it. If you believe in it, you should fight it. What actions are you taking now? What legal actions in particular? Well, right now I've taken up a uh, suit against the uh, school and the school board uh, under the uh, human rights. Uh, Tribunal of Ontario okay. and so um, I signed with a lawyer and uh, we just filed it so we should be hearing uh, a response within the next 30 days. I want to just read to you a quote um, and this comes from uh, I believe a, a member of, I'm not sure if it's your school board or another school board trustee who's commenting on, I suppose it's the slippery slope that, that the Catholic uh, uh, educational establishment finds itself in having gone along with Bill 13. And it says, um, now we've seen the result of appeasing a belligerent anti-Catholic liberal government, a human rights complaint, and a student intent on publicly undermining Catholic sexual teaching. It's not too late for Ontario's bishops or Catholic school trustees to invoke Section 93. They should do it quickly. Section 93 is what provides um, the Catholic community with their denominational privilege to have publicly funded Catholic schools. Do you, do you see this possibly leading to a, a landmark court case on Section 93 and its applicability to, for example, impeding, I would say, constitutional rights to gay students to form GSAs? Could it go that far? I haven't seen uh, Section 93, and I don't know what Section 93 would entail, but if it would be revisited, um, I think that uh, there, not only myself, but there's a lot of individuals uh, that would take actions uh, to uh, take um, the, 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 the religion out of the state, right? There's no reason to have religion within state, um, and um, our, our government has made it very clear that everyone has a right uh, on every front. But if 
they think that they have more rights because uh, of who they are uh, than, than myself because of my sexual orientation. Mm-hmm. I think that's getting into some very heavy ground. I, I think that um, it, it would be great to see the religious community become more accepting of um, uh, people that identify as queer and or trans. And I really think that it's come to a point in time where um, it, we need to support one another. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter uh, who you love. It doesn't matter uh, what you do as a job. It doesn't matter what um, you go, uh, go back home to. Uh, but I mean, everyone should support one another and uh, we don't have a right to oppress one another. We don't have a right to hate one another uh, and that we should love one another for who we are. Christopher Karras, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on Think Again TV and, and sharing the story. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure.